Okay, being able to create formulas and have Excel do your math for you is fantastic, but if you can't make it look good where your boss can't just look at it and understand the data, then um, you're missing a very important step. So let me show you how to format things so that you look awesome. All right, so uh, earlier I said I like to put all the data down first and do my format formatting last because then I know exactly how much um, room I'm, I'm dealing with, how many columns, how many rows. So here I can see I'm going to go all the way across. I want to run this header all the way across all the data that relates to that heading, which would be all the way to here. So I'm going to click and drag across for this just this row, which is my main title of my of my uh, sheet spreadsheet, and I'm going to merge and center it. Now the other thing I use is something called um, styles here and so I can drop these down and this is a very fast way to get your data looking very clean and easy to read so I'm going to use this title format here and then you can do the same thing for this one which is your subtitle not as important not as big but I still want it to look nice so I'm going to go with um, yeah I think that one I'm going to merge and center it so it goes across the data like that so this is a nice title um, here I can just bold these, control B or hit my bold key here. Either one works fine on all of those. These are a little bit different. These are um, kind of like subheadings within the sub, sub, subheading. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, these are under that. So um, let's check out one of these. Maybe I might go with this one. Uh, let's see, fall makes me think orange, so maybe I'll go with orange-ish, like that one. And then I'm going to do the matching spring in maybe green, right, which year in total maybe that should be in green since we're hoping to make some money, but since we're talking about livestock, which rarely make money, maybe we'll go with yellow. Anyway, you get the idea. So each um, color offsets a different set of data. And now sometimes I'll do alternating colors across my row just to make it easier for my eye to travel across. Uh, sometimes I'll do different colors down. You can do it however you'd like. But for example, um, well, hello there, Mr. Message. I want to do nothing that you're saying, but thanks for the offer. Um, so there's a couple different things you could do. Keep the current color scheme, don't show this message again. I'm going to go with that. Um, okay, I'm going to fill this with a light, um, I'm actually going to go with a light gray so that just my eye has a little bit easier time going across. And once you set that gray to that fill there, if you click it again it's going to stay on whatever it was before. So that's kind of nice, makes it a little bit easier to read. The other thing I like to do is across my totals, I use the accounting total style, which is here. And the reason why I do is when you take accounting, you learn that all totals have double line underneath. And so that's just an easy way for me, me to clearly see that those are that's my total column. All right, and then you could color this however you'd like. I'd probably go back with my grays here just to make them easy to see. And I would probably go ahead and run, fill this all the way across. So I get my minimums for every column in there. And same thing here. And you can see that when you're dragging them this way, I'm losing my money sign, which is kind of a bummer. What's up with that? And so that's kind of interesting. As soon as I double click it, it realizes I'm talking about money and I hit enter and it changes it back. So maybe it would be better to fill it down where it knows the type um, of numbers I'm dealing with. So here it just is just a number, and these um, set this one to dollars, and then fill down. That way it does the formatting for me. Of course, I just got gray in everything, so you can see. Maybe you want to do that after you fill. Whoops. Okay. And now on this one, I'm going to take the gray away, which means to set it to no fill. Okay. 
So that's a pretty clean um, sheet. I think that's fairly easy to read. You can see where your totals are. Um, your money's set correctly to currency, not accounting. Um, pounds are regular numbers, not money sign. Uh, I like centering stuff, so I'm probably going to grab all of these and I'm going to make sure it's everything is centered. So what I did there was I just, some things were centered, some weren't, so I threw everything to the left and then pulled it back to the center, which is where I want it to be at the end. That's a quick way to correct, to make sure everything looks the same. Okay, very good. Now, as far as um, printing, if you were to print this, let me show you a couple of tricks with that. So we'll go here to File and down to Print. This generates a print preview. And I can already see I don't like this because I'm missing data. You can see I've got two pages now. And that looks goofy, so we don't want that. You could easily fix that by changing the orientation of the page to landscape. Problem solved. But I'm going to show you a way to make it look even better. So just going through these settings real quick. This is print active sheet, means whatever sheet you're on in the workbook. You could also print the entire workbook if you had multiple sheets that were ready to be printed. Um, I personally go through each sheet one at a time and make sure it's how I want it to look before I print it. But um, you might get to the point where you're ready to print entire workbooks. Landscape orientation for this data, because it's pretty wide, um, this is going to stay the same. Margins, I generally put them to narrow so that the data will look bigger. And the, where, the way that I make the data look bigger is I use the scaling here. And so I'll say fit sheet to one page. If you know it's going to run longer than one page, you can just do the columns to one page. Uh, that's another one I use a lot, but I, I'm going to do this, just fit sheet to one page. Okay. And let's go here to page setup. I'm going to show you a couple more things. So going through these, this is you can make all the same changes we just walked through. And here are your margins. But you can also here change it to vertical, horizontally, and vertically um, centered on the page. You could change your header and footer here. So you would hit custom header and you could put in your name here and in the right section here you could put in um, page number and then this one's your date you can also do a file name which is handy if you need to know the name of the file like if it's something you print and hand out and someone might hand it back to you and you want to edit it if you want to put the, f the file name and the header or footer it's an easy way to find it um, so you can, let's say, I'll go with date and although that looks like not the date Every time the document is opened, it will enter a new date there. So it constantly updates the date. Okay, and then the last thing is sheets, which I think is important to know that the grid lines are here. And so you can see how this looks without grid lines. I'll go ahead and click the grid line so you can see what it looks like. That's the only checkbox that I use in this page. So there we go. Now it's to the center, and you can see these little dotted lines um, are the grid lines. So depending on how you've set up the page, it's, it might be that your coloring is so good you don't need the grid lines. And that is how you want to see the data. That works too. But anyway, that's a nice way to, to finish um, balancing it out and then you're ready to print it. The last thing I want to show you is called wrap text. So let's say um, you need to have this column here, but you want to put more data here. Dale Jr. Best NASCAR driver ever. Okay, so that's not going to fit. You could do this, which looks odd because this is so, you know, all the other ones are short. So I, I can say, nope, I'm going to select that cell and I'm going to activate wrap text, which will wrap it like that. I'm going to double click here because it's way too tall. Okay, why is it so tall? Let me go in here, make sure that I'm all the way backed up. Enter. Well, that's kind of odd. The other thing I want to show you is you can manually make a break. 
So let's say you want this to be on the first line and the NASCAR driver ever on the second line. You would hold down the Alt key and hit Enter. Alt Enter. And now when you hit Enter on your keyboard, you can see no matter how wide you make this, it's still only going to be, um, it's got that manual break right there. This is could be why it's low, so let's change it to here. Oh, there you go. That was the fix. I love it when it's easy. Okay, so just to recap, you put your wrap text on there. You double click to get into the cell. And you can see from using your arrow keys, you've got two lines. And there is an Alt Enter right here, which has put this information on the second line. So it forced it to be on the second line. So now we can double click here and it comes in a little more narrow. So that's your wrap text feature which can be very handy. I believe that's it for now.